Good day, fellow investors. Amira's 20F report, annual report, finally, finally came out and I've got so many questions, requests to comment, what's my opinion, so it is again proper to make a video on this, even if I think we closed the Amira case last November, but nevertheless, as still things are discussed, let me close this once forever. So before we start discussing Amira, let me first discuss the risks of investing according to videos and how that goes and what can you follow and what you can't follow. I was also discussed on a German show, so it's also good to address all of that. Let's start with the discussion about risk of investing and then discussing the German show and then discussing the investment lessons that are there from Amira. Amazing lessons for long-term investor. So let's start with the story. I was bullish on Amphi in 2017. My idea was that higher rise prices will lead to higher revenues and finally to more cash. Cash, cash, cash. Cash is the key word here. On Amphi's balance sheet and perhaps a dividend that would potentially push the stock to above 2030 like it was the case with KRBL. That didn't happen and on the 30th of November, I immediately published this video. The stock was still significantly above 4, 5, I think. So 7.39 my time PM, that's 1.39 PM Eastern time, November 30th, when Amphi Amira published their previous financials. On that day, the stock dropped from above 6 to 4, 4 something. 4.30, I think, was the low. I sold everything I had in Amphi immediately as soon as the market opened i was the first seller i even driven the price significantly down but i didn't like what i saw and this is what i said good day fellow investors i think everybody will be expecting my take on amira's earnings now this is a really great example of how i approach investments you find something you expect something if it fits your expectations you make a lot of money if it doesn't meet your expectations, you don't lose a lot. The first time I recommended Amira on this channel was at 4.75, when I really thought, okay, at this price, Amira, there is little room for losses and there is a potential for a huge gain if the increase in Basmati prices reflects onto the financials. That, unfortunately, in this first six months didn't happen. It is possible that due to the seasonality of the business, Amira's earnings improve significantly in the next six months. However, we will know that first time somewhere in May when the company announces their full year results and then really see it in the audited report coming out at the end of July. So that is six months from now or eight months till the audited report. In between there perhaps will be some financing, but don't expect much. There is little probability of catalysts coming up in the next eight months, which could make Amira a value trap. So let's first dig into the earnings and then I'll discuss my view on what's going on. Revenue increased 8%, but I expected much, much more. The 8% will just be from rice increases, which means they didn't sell much more. The margin is always the healthy margin of 13.7% which is okay. Profit after tax in line with previous earnings, which means that really wasn't an improvement. Even if we'll see later in the balance sheet, there should have been. I really expected higher revenue, at least 20, 25% from the sales. Then I expected higher cash. This was my really my catalyst, much more cash on the balance sheet coming, coming from profitable revenues, profitable sales. That again didn't happen. If we look at the revenue, it did increase from 210 to 228 million. What increased significantly and what I expected to increase was the change in inventory of finished goods. So the value of the inventory due to the seasoning, due to the aging of the paddy increased from 12 million, the benefit to 36 million, of course, in relation to higher prices. However, this means that if there wouldn't be the change in inventory benefit, there wouldn't be profitability for Amira. So you really have to see from different perspectives those basic earnings per share of 9 million or 30 cents, 29 cents. This is my biggest worry and something I really don't like. It could really be due to demonetization in India, 
But nevertheless, in the previous quarter, past due trade receivables were 43 million. Now those 43 million are still there. Okay, six months has passed, which means there have been some payments from the past due receivables. But now the past due for more than three months and less than six months are 45 million which means that a company like Amira that really depends on the trade receivables has 78 million past due. 78 million is $2 per share almost, which would completely change how Amira looks. This is a catalyst to look at in the next earnings. If Amira manages to get it paid in time, the debt would be much lower, the debt cost would be much lower, profitability would be much higher alongside the debt finance. So I really don't like the earnings. I hoped it would be better and that would that better that growth has been my catalyst for holding Amira. Such catalyst didn't happen. I will be researching other stocks. I will be looking at other stocks. I will be keeping an eye on Amira to see what happens. If the stock price goes significantly down, creating another bargain, I will look to open another position looking into July 2000, May, July 2018. However, there is still plenty of time from there. The risks have increased because of the past due trade receivables, which could really put in jeopardy the whole company possibly, because the inventories guarantee Amira's debt. And if those, Amira loses the, those inventories to guarantee its debt, it cannot sell, it cannot make sales, and a very, very tricky situation can arise. So from my perspective, even if it looks like Financials have improved, everything has grown a little bit. From my perspective, the company is much, much more riskier now. So it didn't work out, let's say. We'll keep an eye, we'll keep adjourned. And that's the story. That's how investing goes. I hope you are not disappointed. Well, I think a lot of you will be disappointed, but that's how investing is. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video and I'm looking forward to your comments. It's a great learning opportunity so we'll see how it works out. And that's it. So I clearly said the catalyst didn't materialize and there was no cash. Further no catalyst ahead which could make Amphi a value trap. Also I expected cash that didn't happen. I also discussed how the change in inventory value is the only driver of profitability for Amira. Something that again increases the risks and I think I said it clearly how the risks have increased, how I sold, etc. But then almost a year later, I get to this. This is a German show. I don't understand German, so I cannot really follow. Entschuldigung. But they did this report on how I trick people into crazy stocks. And this is the portfolio of the Reinhardt that unfortunately bought these stocks at completely the wrong time. The first time I discussed Amira, it was at 4.74. When I sold everything, it was at 4.8, even 5, 5 something, 5.7, 5.3, I think. The first time I discussed UPI, it was at 12. Then I said I sold at 15 the first part and sold at 24, all of it. Lucara, I never said I bought it. And Orioles and Coppel are still good uh, stocks since we discussed them. So I discussed more than 100 stocks on this channel. I share my analysis and people think that even if I'm in a good mood, that that's a signal to buy. Please, I agree with the Germans here with the mission money comment that you should never invest based on YouTube videos. And that's one reason I started a stock market research platform where, where I really show my portfolio, my analysis, my risk reward analysis, my long term investments, what do I, how do I build the portfolio and I have just started to build a portfolio and it will take me a year until I build it. So until that the price of the platform is just $249 where you get all my research so you get me working for you for full time doing the research that you can't do because you don't have the time or the knowledge. So please, before thinking about investing in anything that I discuss on YouTube, check what I do on my stock market research platform, where there is my model portfolio and you can see where my money goes and what is the portfolio exposure, which is key to understanding also 
the risk reward of companies like Amira, because those are always interesting companies, but you have to understand the risk reward. And to be more sure about the risk reward, this is what I wrote on my stock market research platform. So I clearly said about the investment strategy, there are ways to play this. The first way is to simply avoid as the management's integrity is questionable, which is the best thing to do for the risk averse investor. Avoid. 99% of people should, okay, avoid risk averse hasta la vista. The second way to play this is to wait for the market to really panic and push the price down and then hope for the management to save the situation with a good report or an investor presentation. The report didn't come, the late filling, the problems with audits, which means, okay, more and more trouble ahead. The third way to play it, if you really want to risk it, but you have to understand you could lose 100% of your investment because always keep in mind that it could get delisted and you could lose 100% of your investment. So that's the risk reward. So please understand the risk reward and this is why I didn't buy Amphi for the model portfolio as as soon as I looked at it rationally I said no way after November 2017 and then there was no cash. So please check my research platform, check my analysis and use those analysis as a tool to help you on the risk reward and what can happen. I have a column I have uh, about describing the risks of what can happen to a stock price and there are some stocks that I own that have a risk assessment of 100% and that's extremely important to understand for portfolio positioning etc. So as the German said in the video, as the German guy said in the video, never ever invest on a YouTube video, please carefully assess the risk and reward. My job is to analyze companies, I analyze lots of companies, so I document that on YouTube. Now that we understand the risk reward, let's look at Amira's current report. Amphi didn't file a report because the auditor didn't want to sign it, so they need to check a lot of things. First thing, when you open the report, the number of shares now is 46.3 million. When I was looking at, when I started researching Amira, it was 27 million. So huge dilution there, which is, okay, something unfortunate. However, the big, big impact here is the change in inventory of finished goods of 106 million, which is huge on the company's assets. So the total impairment of the inventory was 133 million, so 134 million, so one-time provision for impairment of inventory. So their explanation, we'll get to it later. Let's see other things as I went through the report. So they, of course, the main risk is always the indebtedness that increased even uh, in that time. Uh, then something changed in the revenue where they used to book as revenue. Now they in booked something as commission. So 93 million in revenue less from an accounting difference. And they, that 93 million in revenue increased other income from zero to five million. Okay, what's that? Five, six percent margin on a commission job. Okay, it shouldn't be recognized as revenue. But okay, you can get across that as it was profit. Other income increased 5 million. Now the big thing, and this is really huge. Cost of materials, including change in inventory of finished goods. And here they say, notably the group recognized provision for impairment of inventory being one-time expense for the amount of 134 million in fiscal 2018. We carry inventories for regular period of time at times upon careful consideration. The inventories are written off in their natural qualitative deterioration. However, this year we identified certain deteri deterioration in quality of inventories primarily due to large number of warehousing facilities spread across India. The mismatch in cash to cash cycle and sporadic unfavorable weather conditions the management believes these are one-time events driven largely by macroeconomic conditions and also by uncontrollable external factors. This deteriora deterioration in quality of inventory results into higher percentage of broken rice content upon processing. The management has decided 
consciously and conservatively to recognize a provision for impairment of inventories of 134 million, considering the adjustment in its realizable value. When I read this, this is pure bullshit. I'm happy I sold when the higher inventory and Basmati didn't turn into cash because it was fishy and strange that it didn't with Basmati prices going up 50%. Now we know exactly why they why that didn't turn into cash. This is the reason they didn't have the inventory. They had broken rice across India. So that's where the company blows up. So Amphi in the past was piling up profits in non-existing inventory over the years. And here is where the trouble begins for Amphi. The inventory was the collateral for the loans from Indian banks. Without that, now that the banks know that, the debt will be problematic going forward. Chanana covers for the debt he is guaranteeing with the shares, with the stocks, with everything Amira owns. So as Amira doesn't have the cash to repay the debt, the banks probably will not refinance the debt. And hasta la vista Amira. Very negative cash flows, always focus on the cash, cash. I hope that the catalyst would be the cash in 2017. That didn't come. And I said hasta la vista in November, as you heard in the video. So the debt is there while the inventory declined. I think that the banks will not renew. This is where the company blows up. Uh, inventories are down, trade receivable. So the customers are not paying 258 million from 209 to 1839. So uh, really, really a cash crunching situation to Amira. And uh, the trade receivables are all also very questionable. Why are they not giving, getting the money? We have seen inventory I don't know if I should call it fraud or not, but 130 million in inventory, you don't lose it overnight. And now trade receivables, are they there? That's a good question that we'll see later. Uh, and that was also risks that I mentioned extremely important in the video last November. So inventory down, receivable up, debt to cover the bad trades, it's not. So what to take out from this? First is agree with the Germans, never invest on YouTube videos. Secondly, cash is king. Thirdly, low debt is king because that, that, that really makes a company blow up and makes the management do crazy things. So it all boils down to a very, very risky situation for Amira. And as I said in the previous video in November, that, mm, <laughs> that the risks have increased while the rewards have gotten lower and that's why I sold everything back then as the catalyst didn't work and this actually might be a value trap. It will be very interesting to see how this evolves, how will shareholders be protected, how will the land be sold, at what price, at what, what will the banks get, etc, etc. Unfortunately the story is like this, I'm happy that I sold back in November. I'm sorry that I think it was very clear that I sold as the catalyst didn't materialize. I'm sorry for all of those that lost money while holding the bag, but that's something that you have to really understand when investing. It's about risk reward and selling when something that doesn't happen. That's crucial to sell when something doesn't happen and seek for other stocks, as I said in the previous video. So this is where I will close with Amira. It all boils down to cash, debt, and watching carefully what's going on and acting on it. Never fall in love with a stock, no matter what's the potential, because then you're betting and not investing. So also, I remind you, if you want to invest on anything that I do, please check my stock market research platform with careful detailed risk reward analysis and portfolio exposures which are the key to show you okay if we risk something how much do we risk and you will be surprised by seeing my portfolio and especially the cash allocation at this point in the market thank you for watching looking forward to your comments and i'll see you in the next video